Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So we've been discussing the power factor improvement, power factor from the previous videos. Today, let's say we have a number of examples on uh, relating to what? Relating to the power factor correction equipment. So the rating, so we developed the formula in the previous video was for the rating of the uh, uh, equipment required was that QC, the capacitor leading KVRs injected by the capacitors would be what? P1 times tangent of phi1 and then minus P2 tangent of phi2. Now again P1 if equal to P2 so you take it common and you have tangent of phi1 and phi2 whereas phi1 and phi2 are the power factor angles 1 for before power factor correction 2 for after power factor correction. So, example is what? Example is a three phase distribution feeder supply a load of 1.2 megawatts. So, let's say I have an example. This is given you have a three phase feeder. This is supplying a load of 1.2 megawatts at what? At an 11 kilovolts. 11 kilovolts to a load center at the utilization end of the power system at a power factor of 0.8 lagging. So the power factor is 0.8 lagging currently. It, if it is desired to improve the power factor to 0.9 lagging, so you are desired to improve this to 0.9 lagging. 0.95 lagging, 0.95 lagging. So calculate the rating of the power factor correct uh, improvement capacitors to be installed in parallel with the load in delta connected bank. So you have to uh, calculate QC you could say or you could also say uh, cal calculate in farads. QC is fine, right? And then you have what for KVR that's fine. Uh, and then you have the leading current drawn by the capacitor bank from the supply so which means the capacitor current IC uh, and the capacitance of each phase bank so again the capacitance of each phase bank so these are the three things unknown right so let us get going which means over here what through the formula have a look what is given is P is given so we are only given a single load the load is not varying so P1 is equal to P2 over here is equal to P which is a 1.2 megawatts fine yes similarly power factor we are given is the original power factor right now is let's say cos of phi1 is 0.8 so from here you could find out the value of phi1 which would be the cos inverse of 0.8 and what is this? This is 36.8 degrees. 36.8 degrees. Similarly, then you are given to improve it to 0.95 lagging. So, which means that cos of phi 2 is 0.95 lagging. So, this implies what that the power factor angle would be the cos inverse of 0.95. And this is what? This is 18.2. 18.2. 2 degrees so which implies what that the leading kvrs injected by the capacitor qc would be what it would be 1.2 1.2 and then you have what uh, tangent of phi 1 is 36.8 minus tangent of 18.2 and this comes out to be what this is in megawatts so this comes out to be 0 0 0.5 0 0.504 0 0.504 so this would be in megawatts why because you have written over here is uh, uh, in the megawatts or this will be equal to 504 kvars right yes now this is for three phase right you were given three phase supply so which means this is for three phase so if you write it for single phase for per phase what would be the uh, quantity so for per phase it would be 0 0.504 so you divide it by 3 what does this come out to be 0.168 megawatts 0.168 mva hours 
find yes since the capacitor is to be installed on the HD side the voltage across the phase the phase bank would be 11 kilovolts since they are connected in Delta and so the line voltage is equal to the phase voltage now QC is equal to V times IC right QC is equal to V times IC so you need the capacitor current so IC would be equal to QC which is 0 0.168 0 0.168 and then divided by the voltage so the voltage you would take it as 11 kV this is in the delta would be connected so this would be connected on the HD side the phase voltage and the line voltage in delta are the same so IC would be divided by 11 so if this is in kilowatts so make this also in kilo multiply 10 to the power 3 which means 168 divided by 11 so what does this come out to be so the capacitor current comes out to be in this case is IC is 15.27 amperes this is the leading current that is drawn by the capacitor so you've got your QC, you've got your IC, now C you can calculate by what XC would be what a voltage upon current, V is equal to IR, right? V is equal to I times XC. So XC comes out to be from here is what you can calculate is V upon IC. So V is 11 kilovolts. So 11 kilovolts, so do it like this and then you have what divided by the current is 15.27. This comes out to be how much is 720.36 ohms, 720.36 ohms. Now again you know that XC is equal to 1 upon 2 pi FC. So this implies what that C would be equal to 1 upon 2 pi take the frequency to be 50 and xc is 720.36 and the value of the capacitance in farad units of farads would come out to be 4.4 microfarads 4.4 microfarads so we've also got your c we've also got the reactance of xc all right so this was again a simpler example Example number two, I can write down yes, can I not? I have a lot of space, yes. So let's say example number two, I start from here. What does this state? An industrial load consists of a three phase, 50 hertz, three phase, 50 hertz, 400 volts, induction motor operating at induction motor and it is operating at a power factor of 0.7 lagging it is operating at a power factor of 0.7 lagging the motor develops 80 bhp under full load conditions 80 brake horsepower bhp under full load conditions and the efficiency of this is 85 percent efficiency is 85 percent it is desired to improve the power factor to 0.9 lagging. So it is desired to improve power factor 2 is to be 0.9 lagging. Employing a capacitor bank connected in delta across the supply. Calculate the rating of the capacitor bank and its capacitance when each capacitor bank is rated for 100 volts. So you have to find QC and you also have to find C and each capacitor bank is rated for 100 volts. Each bank is 100 volts. So which means what? That the available capacitors in the market are rated for 100 volts. So you'll also have to specify the number how many you will need all right yes yeah, so let's first of all we do the we do what we do uh, as in the normal practice so the first is what that you have got your cause of phi 1 which is what which is 0.7 so from here you can find out your phi 1 which is what which is the cause inverse of 0.7 would be 45.57 degrees 
right now you have your cos of phi 2 which is what which is 0 0.9 so from here you can find out your phi 2 which would be the cos inverse of 0.9 and this comes out to be 25.84 25.84 now have a look we are not given the power in the units of kilowatts we need it in watts right but we are given in bhps so we will know how to convert bhps into uh, into what uh, into kilowatts so to convert bhps into kilowatts i've already told you multiply it with a 0 0.736 now this BHP, when all when you're given the BHP, so this is basically referring to the output, right? But we need the input power. This P in this formula is the input power. So first of all, what do you do is the power output. The power output is 80 BHPs multiplied with 0. What? 736? 0. 0.736, yes. So this comes out to be what? This comes out to be 58.88 kilowatts. 58.88 kilowatts and this is the output power but we need the input power so for that we use the definition of efficiency p would be what the output power divided by the efficiency right yes so this would be the output power divided by the efficiency would be what 58 Point double eight divided by efficiency is given is 0 0.85 and this comes out to be how much 69.27 kilowatts 69.27 kilowatts so this is the power that we will use in the formula for qc right yes so put down the values please so qc the rating of kvrs would be what 69.27 multiplied tangent of 51 is 45.57 minus tangent of phi 2 which would be what 25.84 so this implies what the leading kvrs that you need to inject into the system are 34 37.4 kvrs 37.4 kvrs now this is again for the three phase for per phase what do you need to do is for per phase you need to divide this thing that is 37.4 you divide it by 3 this comes out to be 12.46 kvrs 12.46 kvars now again have a look the capacitor current you can find out from v upon what the capacitor current over here we found out as we found it over here ic the leading current taken by the capacitor ic is what it is qc upon v so qc you have calculated is 12.46 kvars and the voltage over here is 400 volts so if this is in simply the units of volts so do this also in the units of var so twin this i would introduce for the kilo so the current in amperes would come out to be 31.5 amperes now if you are you have found out the current from here you can find out xc so xc is what it is again the voltage upon the current right yes so the voltage is 400 upon the current is 31.5 so this comes out to be 12.7 ohms and similarly from here you can find out c and c would be what it would be 1 upon 2 pi f into xc so this comes out to be uh, 250 microfarads 250 microfarads now this is c but you were given that each bank now each bank is rated for what is rated for 100 volts so what do you do is uh, we need four identical capacitors in series we need four identical capacitors in series why because the phase voltage is 400 volts the phase voltage is 400 volts but the capacitors are rated for 100 volts which means that we have four capacitors in series to give you the required 400 volts so which means what 
that the capacitor the capacitance of each capacitor now this is the capacitance that is the total capacitance which would have to be connected for the 400 volts but we are given rated at 100 volts so which means this is the total the four capacitance the equivalent that is connected in series so which means what that each bank will have capacitance what each bank has capacitance equal to what 250 microfarads divided by 4 right yes so this would be 62.4 microfarads this would be 62.4 microfarads and these are rated at 100 volts this one is rated at this is rated for uh, 400 volts so which means this is the combined uh, capacitance of it right yes should we go for, for another one should we go for another example let's see we go let's see we go for a third example number three a factory includes an induction motor rated at 100 kilowatts so induction motor is rated at 100 kilowatts operating at a power factor of 0.7 lagging so i would just try to over here directly cause of phi is 0.7 lagging it is desired to improve the power factor using a synchronous condenser of 50 kilowatts so synchronous condenser of 50 kilowatts is used uh, which can also cope with an additional drive load of course calculate the leading power factor with which the synchronous condenser must be operated to improve the power factor to 0.9 lagging so this is cause of phi 1 cause of phi 2 is 0.9 lagging and you have to calculate the power factor at which the synchronous condenser operates right yes so to improve your power factor from given 0.7 to 0.9 also calculate the leading kvr taken by the synchronous motor under full load also calculate the leading kvars of the synchronous motor right so from here have a look you can find out phi 1 and phi 2 right so phi 1 is what just let me know from here is 45.57 again 45.57 and phi 2 is the inverse of this is 0.9 so where is it 25.84 again 25.84 now basically the uh, cause of phi is kilowatts divided by kvs cause of phi which is the power factor power factor is equal to the cause of phi so this is basically kilowatts divided by kvs right yes so have a look we are given the kilowatts in each case so we can find out kvs right let's say this is one this is two fine so i can find out my s1 as what as 100 divided by 0 0.7 100 divided by 0 0.7 this would give me the reactive power before power factor correction so what does this come up to be 142.85 kvas 142.85 kvas right yes similarly now for s2 what do you have so have a look previously you are before power factor this is your p this is your p which is let's say p1 which is 100 watts 100 kilowatt this is initially right so for this you have got your s1 fine but what happens is after power factor correction after power factor correction is you have an additional load of which is what this is now this would be p1 plus let's say i would name it pc for the synchronous condenser so this means that this 50 is additionally added so 100 plus 50 so which means now this would be my resultant s2 for this case right yes so what do you have is that now my s2 would be what this would be p2 which is 100 plus 50 so this is 150 divided by the desired power factor angle is now 0.9 so s2 comes out to be how much s2 comes out to be uh, 166.66 166.66 kvas right yes 
Now what can I do? Now what can I do? With the help of sine of theta. With the help of sine of theta what do you have is uh, you can also have sine of theta 1 and sine of theta 2 from here. So just do it for yourself please. First sine of phi 1 and sine of phi 2. You have got your phi 1 and phi 2 so this comes out to be 0 0.71 and 0 0.4 four three now have a look from the power triangle what is the power triangle basically so this is your p this is your uh, uh, this is your q and this one is your s so from sine of theta some people have sine of theta is q upon s right yes write it over here please sine of theta is q upon s so which means s is equal to q sine theta some people have yes q upon s so which means q is equal to s sine of phi yes we have got p we've got s the remaining is q so q1 is s1 sine of phi 1 and similarly q2 is s2 sine of phi 2 put down the values please 101.42 and 71.66 these are the kvars these are the kvars right yes so basically this one was your phi 1 and this one is your phi 2 right yes now what do you require next what do you require next from the triangle real power oa is 100 ab is this and that let it go let it go erective powers we've got okay the synchronous motor qvr is the difference from the vector diagram so the synchronous motor is taking what qvr have a look now uh, the synchronous motor is taking qvars which is dc which is dc over here this much this much I have not drawn this properly. Let me draw it a little properly. Let me draw it a little properly. This is my point A. This is 100, right? Yes. Then this one is the additional, which is 50. And this is my point B, right? You know this. You know this. Now, you have what? You have your S1. This one is your S1 having an angle of phi 1, right? Yes. Now, what do you have is this one becomes your s2 having an angle this much of phi 2 right yes so which means what your q uh, this one is your q1 basically this one is your q1 and this one this one is your q2 so which means the difference of q1 and q2 is what the difference of q1 and q2 this one this one the difference of q1 and q2 this is the kvar that has been injected by what by the capacity by the synchronous condenser in this case have a look this was the initial uh, the initial kvars right now they have been reduced to this much so how have been they reduced they have been reduced by injecting some leading kvrs and those leading kvrs are this much that have balanced this amount of lagging kvrs so the vector difference is this much so the kvrs taken by the what by a synchronous motor so i would write over here q for the synchronous condenser or the synchronous motor would be what they are the difference of q1 and q2 and this comes out to be how much this comes out to be 29.76 29.76 kvars and they are leading of course they are leading they are leading so now you have what you have got your uh, synchronous motor uh, the the leading kvrs taken by a synchronous motor so you have got them right yes and i hope it is clear and then what do you have you need the power factor at which it is operating so which means the angle so the angle would be what the angle would be tangent inverse so you can use the formula for tangent uh, so what would be that formula uh, tangent is uh, through 
proper brushing q upon p so tangent of phi from here is what it is q upon p so have a look you've got the q for the uh, for the motor you've got the p for the motor so which means what that phi for the synchronous motor would be what it would be tangent inverse of q is given is 29.76 divided by the p is given for this is 50 only for the motor now you have to calculate only for the motor okay while i was solving this question in my paper so i took it the overall 150 so that is wrong you only have to take it for the motor that is 50 and this comes out to be 30.54 degrees and you are asked to find the power factor at which it is operating so the power factor of the synchronous motor or synchronous condenser would be cause of 30.54 and this comes out to be 0.86 now will this be leading with this be lagging of course this would be leading of course this would be leading so i believe that should be it i believe that should be it now you can also be asked to find out the the, the rating the uh, rating of the transformer required for the factory so can you not give me the rating of the transformer please give me the rating of the transformer required in the comment section i'll finish this video over here i will see in the next one with maybe some more examples till then take care of yourselves everyone around you do remember me in your prayers do subscribe to the channel goodbye